Susie Chaffee, originally from Rutland, Vermont, has had many nicknames. Called Daffy by her teammates, Joan of Arc and Stretch Pants by the media, and Susie Chapstick after her famous Chapstick commercials, but none encapsulate her enormous contributions to the sport of skiing. The daughter of George and Stevia Chaffee, both well-known skiers, Susie trained with the Pico Ski Club in the Mid-Vermont League. Training in Colorado and at Mammoth in the mid-1960s, Susie began to receive attention as a promising downhiller. She found inspiration skiing with talented brother Rick. The, the time that I won more ski races in a row is when, when Rick broke, busted his knee. When he was at his prime, he had just beaten Billy Kidd and Bale at the World Series of Ski Racing. And he came to the Steamboat Ski Race, which was an Olympic tryout. And I won four races in a row because if he had a chance to be there, then he would have given it everything. And it was so nice um, that we were both the top Americans in the World Series of Ski Racing at Bale and sharing it with someone like Rick. You know, we had our obviously ups and downs as all brothers and sisters do, but um, it was great having a, a family that um, you could share that sport with and enjoy and have a wonderful adventurous life. <laughs> she went to Grenoble, France to compete in the giant Solomon downhill in the 1968 Olympics. Her appearance in Doug Burden's famous silver suit caught the media's attention and opened up new doors for her. He also designed this silver suit along with a Mademoiselle editor that because Americans at that time kind of looked like Salvation Army rejects and wanted to give us some class and style. And so when I was, um, we tested this in Vail and everybody went bananas about it. The French and the Germans contacted me to get the silver suit. So I said, well, I'm going to give this silver suit to the French and Germans if we don't use this. And so, so maybe we should vote on this. And that's how we got to wear the silver suit, which saved my butt in those Olympics because we blew the wax and I still made world headlines. And that gave me a power to help the, my, fellow, my fellow Olympians to turn the rules so that Madison Avenue could work for us. She moved to New York City and started a modeling career. She modeled for Seagram, Dannon, Revlon's Charlie campaign that endorsed women's lib, and perhaps most famously for Chapstick and Ultra Bright. Meanwhile, she had not entirely retired from skiing. She joined the freestyle team in 1971 as a professional, competing and winning in ski ballet. I could spin with my leg over my head, although I couldn't do that in the very, very beginning, but I was heading towards that kind of a um, you know, a real classical ballet idea. And it felt like when I was doing ballet, especially without my poles, like I was embracing the whole mountain. It was like, it was all a part of me. My aura just embraced the whole mountain and vice versa. In 1973, she served as Mount Snow, Vermont's Director of Creative Skiing. In 1977, after all her efforts for women's freestyle skiers, she was the analyst for ABC's Wide World of Sports at the Colgate World Trophy Women's Freestyle Ski Championships. Her impressive talent, fashion flair, and looks sparked a film career. She starred in the Mobius Flip, a heart film about hot dogging, and in Bogner's famous Fire and Ice in 1986. Her experience with the nascent freestyle movement led her on a path of advocacy. She worked to get women's equality in freestyle competition, which led to a national effort to help approve the Amateur Sport Act of 1978 and to enforce Title IX. Along with reforming the international Olympic rules, Susie helped establish governance structure for amateur sports and gain equal rights for women. Susie was the first woman on the board of the United States Olympic Committee, elected in 1976, and served on the President's Council for Physical Fitness under four administrations beginning in 1974. She was voted one of the top 100 athletes of the century by Sports Illustrated, the most popular American skier by People, Snow Country, and Powder Magazines, and one of the top 100 most influential skiers of the century by Ski Magazine. Since 1996, Susie focused her energy on her Native Voices Foundation. It 
Its mission is to create joyful unity through sports and education to heal Mother Earth for all our children. With the help of her Olympic teammates, she has started native ski programs across the country. Skiing is the ticket to uh, a very adventurous life. I think I, you know, I got to see the world. I got to, it opened doors to be able to work with seven presidents of the United States on different projects and um, finding out who I am and what, what my purpose was here because it gave me the power and the, and the press to do things that really meant a lot to me. The Vermont Ski Museum Hall of Fame welcomes Susie Chaffee.